Imagine spending months trying to master Kubernetes, only to discover that 90% of jobs require years of experience. Sounds frustrating, right? And here is the truth. Only 5% of Kubernetes positions are entry level. That means hundreds of thousands of beginners are fighting over for just a handful of roles. I know because I've been there. Sleepless nights, countless tutorials, and still no callbacks. But then I stumbled upon a simple strategy that anyone can implement. Now I'm overwhelmed with so many opportunities that I'm turning down 92% of them. Hi, I'm Suleiman. I'm a cloud engineer and I've been in IT for over 10 years. I've held multiple six-figure cloud roles and I currently run my own cloud security consultancy. Today, I'm revealing why you don't need to learn Kubernetes and what you should do instead. By the way, grab my beginner's guide to the cloud. It's for free for a limited time. Link in the description. So Kubernetes is like a small smart manager for your computer programs. It takes care of running many small specialized pieces of your application called containers across multiple computers or servers. Kubernetes makes sure your application runs smoothly, can handle lots of users and keeps working even if some parts fail or need updates. With that context out of the way, here are five reasons why you shouldn't learn Kubernetes. Firstly, Kubernetes is notoriously complex. It's like trying to run a marathon when you've never even run a mile. The learning curve is steep and it can be overwhelming for beginners. I remember when I first started looking into Kubernetes, I spent weeks trying to just grasp the concepts and trying to set up a cluster. It was frustrating, time consuming, and honestly, a bit demoralizing. Even Google, the creators of Kubernetes, have recognized its complexity. Drew Bradstock, a product lead for Google Kubernetes Engine, admitted that what we've seen is a lot of enterprises are embracing Kubernetes, but then they run headlong into a difficulty. Now, the second reason is that Kubernetes is designed to manage complex multi-container applications across multiple machines. And if you're just starting out or working on smaller projects, you don't need that level of complexity, especially small startups. It's like using a crane to change a light bulb. It reaches, but the setup time and cost far outweighs the benefits. To me, Kubernetes was created to solve a specific set of problems. In particular, the automated deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. It has a complex set of options aimed at one thing, high availability. So unless your applications need five nines of uptime, Kubernetes is probably an overkill. Next, while Kubernetes skills are in high demand, they are typically required for more senior positions. According to the Kubernetes job market trends, over seven percent of Kubernetes jobs were for senior roles, with lead-level positions making up 10% of the jobs. Kubernetes isn't required for entry-level or even mid-level IT positions. By diving into Kubernetes too early, you're running before you can even walk, especially when you're just starting out. The fourth reason is once implemented, Kubernetes requires continuous maintenance and optimization. As a CNCF survey revealed, over-provisioning was the most common factor leading to overspending. In simpler terms, this means that a significant majority of companies in the survey were wasting money by paying for more cloud resources than they actually needed or even used. This overspending was primarily due to allocating too many resources, just, just in, case in case they, they might, might be needed, need. rather than matching resource allocation closely to actual usage. One source estimates that you are looking at the initial configuration cost of around $600,000, with approximately $140,000 per month in ongoing consulting and maintenance costs. Another blog estimates operating Kubernetes clusters can cost at least $100,000 and easily exceed $500,000 annually for ridiculously low amounts of resources. These hefty costs for many smaller and mid-sized organizations is difficult to justify unless the complexity of their operations truly requires such a robust orchestration system. Now, the fifth and perhaps the most significant reason is that in the real world, if you are a 
business, adopting Kubernetes will almost always require a complete redesign of your existing infrastructure. If your current infrastructure isn't container-based, you'll need to refactor your application to work within containers. You can't just drag and drop, you know, lift and shift. This process is time-consuming and complex, especially for legacy systems. And while your dev teams are focused on redesigning your infrastructure for Kubernetes, they are not working on improving your core applications or developing new features that the business wants. This can lead to a slowdown in product development and potentially impact your competitive edge in the market. Now, here is five things that you should do instead. First and foremost, you want to master cloud fundamentals. Before you consider diving into Kubernetes, it's crucial to have a solid understanding of cloud computing basics. Start by familiarizing yourself with compute services such as Amazon EC2, which provides a scalable computing capacity in the cloud. Next, you want to grasp the concept of storage, particularly object storage services like Amazon S3, which offer scalable and durable data storage solutions. Then you want to delve into networking, focusing concepts like VPCs for creating secure and an isolated network environments. And finally, learn about security measures, especially identity and access management, which allows you to control access to your cloud resources more effectively. Now, don't underestimate these. I can't tell you how many times I've interviewed candidates for my cloud security consultancy who couldn't explain simple concepts like VPCs or IAMs. And if you need a roadmap to become a cloud engineer in 12 weeks, then consider joining my Cloud Engineer Academy. I've compiled the exact roadmap that I use to make my switch in three months into a self-paced program that anyone can take. You also get access to monthly Q&As with me, an active Discord community with nearly 300 members that will keep you accountable and help you when you get stuck. And don't take my word for it. Check out JStory, who went from banking to cloud hired in less than six months months. Link in the description. Now, secondly, you are better off grasping Docker and containerization concepts. To explain, think of containers as lightweight, portable boxes that hold all the necessary ingredients and instructions for a software application to run. Docker is a popular tool that helps create and manage these boxes. Containerization is the process of putting the software into these standard units, containers for development, shipment, and deployment. Kubernetes is fundamentally about managing containers, orchestrating them. When you learn Docker, you'll discover how to containerize applications, appreciate the benefits of container technology, and learn to manage and deploy individual containers. This knowledge is valuable on its own and can help you land six-figure cloud roles. It will also significantly ease your journey into Kubernetes if you really need it later. Remember, Kubernetes is a sophisticated orchestration tool designed to solve complex problems at scale. And for many applications, especially in their early stages, simpler solutions like Docker Compose or managed container services can be more appropriate and less overwhelming. This approach ensures you are not overcomplicating your infrastructure prematurely and allows you to make more informed decisions about your technology stack as your project and business evolves. Next, you want to learn infrastructure as code. Now, in simple terms, IAC is a way of managing and setting up computer systems and networks using written instructions, i.e. infrastructure's code, instead of manually configuring things through the graphical interface or the command line, like the AWS console. It's like having a detailed executable blueprint for your entire IT setup. IAC is a critical skill in modern cloud computing with popular IAC tools like Terraform or CloudFormation, which allow you to define and manage your infrastructure using code, bringing several benefits. Firstly, it ensures consistency in infrastructure deployment across different environments. Secondly, it enables a version control for your infrastructure, making it easier to track changes and roll back if needed. It also facilitates easier collaboration among team members, as everyone can work from the same code base. Learning infrastructure's code will make you more efficient and valuable in any cloud role. And I can speak from personal experience right here. When I first started using Terraform, it changed how I approached infrastructure management. Instead of clicking around the AWS console like a noob, I could define my entire infrastructure in code, version it, and easily replicate it across different environments. Not only did I 
save time, but also reduce the risk of human error and improve the overall reliability for our systems. Now, the fourth thing that you should do instead is learning and mastering CICD pipelines, which are essential in modern software development. CICD stands for continuous integration and continuous deployment. Imagine it as Tesla's automated car assembly line, but for software. Just as Tesla's factory has a series of situations where different parts are added and checked, CICD automates the process of building, testing, and releasing software. These automated pipelines make it easier to add new code, test it, and release it to users. They are the secret behind fast and reliable software updates. Learning tools like Jenkins or GitHub Actions to set up these pipelines will make you more attractive to employers. These tools automate many tasks that developers use to do manually. Mastering CICD helps teams work faster and companies release better software more quickly. As more businesses want to update their software rapidly, they're looking for people who understand the CICD lifecycle. Now, my final recommendation is prioritizing learning Python. Python is a versatile language that spans across multiple domains, including web development, data science, artificial intelligence, and cloud computing. Its flexibility makes it an excellent foundation for any tech career, especially for those new to programming. Python's clear and concise syntax allows developers to focus on problem solving rather than grappling with complex language rules, offering a more gentle learning curve compared to any other languages. It's consistently ranking at the top of this index. A respected measure of programming language popularity indicates a strong and ongoing job market demand. Now, in cloud computing, Python's value is particularly evident. Many cloud tasks can be automated using Python scripts, and many major cloud providers offer comprehensive Python SDKs. SDKs just means they provide a set of tools and libraries to make it easier for Python developers to interact with and use their cloud services in their applications. Now, unlike Kubernetes, with Python, you can rapidly develop practical projects, provide tangible experience to showcase to potential employers, helping you land a job. And by mastering Python, you are establishing a solid programming foundation that will serve you well across various tech roles and facilitate the learning of more specialized tools in the future. By the way, make sure you follow me on Instagram and help me get to 10,000 followers. Now then, you might be wondering, Soleiman, should, should I, I never, never learn, learn Kubernetes? Kubernetes? And that's a valid question. To me, Kubernetes has its place, but it's important to approach it at the right time and for the right reasons. As Jake Warner, the CEO of Cycle.io points out, Kubernetes is made to service enterprises' needs at an enormous scale. Using it makes sense if you are a Fortune 500 company with massive container deployments. So having Kubernetes is essential if you are aiming for a specific roles like DevOps or software engineer at large tech companies. In fact, in Q1 of 2024, 43% were software engineer jobs and 10% of DevOps roles required Kubernetes knowledge. But don't forget, you also need multiple years of experience and ensure you have a solid foundation in the other critical skills that I mentioned first. Now, additionally, Kubernetes should be considered in the following scenarios. Number one, scalability needs. When your application needs to scale rapidly and efficiently to handle varying loads, Kubernetes auto-scaling capabilities can be invaluable. Number two, multi-cloud strategy. If your organization is pursuing multi-cloud or hybrid cloud strategy, Kubernetes can provide a consistent platform across different cloud providers. And finally, high availability demands. For applications that require high uptime and fault tolerance, Kubernetes self-healing capabilities and multi-node architecture can be beneficial. Now, I've been working in IT for over 10 years and I've held several six-figure cloud roles. And the thing is, I didn't need Kubernetes knowledge for any of those roles. In fact, my expertise are in cost optimization, efficient cloud architecture design, cloud security, DevSecOps was just as valuable to employers. I've saved companies millions of dollars by optimizing their cloud spend, designing more efficient, scalable, and secure architectures all without touching Kubernetes. Now, don't get me wrong, Kubernetes is a powerful platform, but in my experience, it's often introduced prematurely before organizations have fully grasped and optimized their use of fundamental cloud services first. Yes, the big tech companies in the world are using Kubernetes and it's working for them. But if you are not a Fortune 500 company, it's not just necessary to implement. And for those of you who want to make the switch to cloud or upskill, this isn't a requirement for you to make a lot of money. Remember, the goal of learning cloud technologies is to 
to solve problems and create value, not just to master a specific tool. And that said, if you're coming up in IT and are wondering whether to start a career in software engineering, then check out this video right here where I break down why you shouldn't become a software engineer and what you should do instead.